Today's webinar is going to deal with feeding milk replacers to lambs or to raise orphan lambs. Now, orphan lambs are much more common now due to prolific breeds like the Finn, the Romanoff, and Ile de France. These breeds of sheep give many multiple births. We also need a dedicated facility or an area for raising these orphan lambs. We need to concentrate raising these lambs on milk replacer, but switching them to solid feed as soon as possible. And it's most desirable to have free choice feeding of milk replacer, because that gives us maximum growth and it does reduce the labor component. There are several automated mixing machines and feeding machines. These machines, usually you dump the powder into a bin, you connect it to a water line, and it automatically mixes the milk replacer powder and the water and then there's a pump that will move it out to the lambs so they can all nurse at different times. You can see a picture of a couple of systems that are available in this slide. Next up, there are pros and cons with all automatic feeders. As in most cases, there's good and bad and so you do need to decide how you want to do this. One of the pros of automatic feeders is milk is consumed in smaller quantities, which gives less digestive upsets. Young lambs are very prone to digestive upsets if they overeat milk replacer. And it does give a more consistent high growth rate. One of the bad things with the cons is it can be significantly more pricey to do this. You have to be careful with hygiene. Hygiene is critical with feeding milk replacer. And it does take a higher level of technical skill to calibrate and keep one of these units running. But once it is running, it does most of the work for you. Now, I want to talk about lamb timeline. The lamb is born, and in the first day, it's critical that it gets colostrum. Adequate colostrum intake must happen in that first 16 to 18 hours of life. Without that, the lamb can be very prone to health issues later on, actually as a young animal, and they, if they don't get the colostrum they need, they get into trouble quite quickly. Weaning weights reflects the growth and size, but eating solid feed is much more critical to decide when to wean your lambs. So the ballpark shown on this slide is that we want the body weight of the lambs to have gone up by threefold before we wean lambs. Now, colostrum was mentioned in the last slide. Colostrum is very, very important for providing protection against pathogens. Ruminant animals, in ruminant animals, antibodies cannot cross the placenta. So calves and lambs are born and they have to get colostrum to get immunity from their mother against diseases that they're gonna face in the first two months of their lives. Timing is very important. The gut has to be open to allow these large molecules, these uh, immunoglobulins, to cross and get into the animal's bloodstream and provide immunology. So it is very critical that the lamb is giving colostrum two or three times in that first, teen, first 18 hours of life. You can see um, that it says the recommendation is for 10% of the lamb's body weight to be fed in the first 24 hours. And the main thing to remember on this is not to feed it all at once. Do not try to feed 10% of a lamb's body weight in one feeding. You'll just guarantee a digestive upset. Smaller, frequent feedings are much, much better than one large tubing where you dose it and you can just make it really quite sick. Now, the fat content of sheep's milk is much higher than cow or goat milk. Now this is important. The fat content of sheep milk is where the energy is located. And because of that fat, milk from sheep contains much, a lot of energy, and that's what allows the lambs to grow. Now, one of the problems is ewes can't produce too much milk because they can't put too much fat in it. So although it's a high calorie milk, and milk replacer, it, it is hard for use to produce because it's 
it's just difficult for them to mobilize all their body reserves. We want to make sure that the milk replacer we use is designed or made with animal products. It is possible to put in plant products like um, vegetable oils or vegetable proteins, and these tend to not be digested by lambs as well as protein or fats that are derived from animal sources. So one of the bottom lines in milk replacer is the most expensive bag is usually the best. Here's a slide showing what good quality milk replacers look like in the dry matter stage and what they look like when they've been rehydrated. And it's important to remember that the milk replacer, when it's been rehydrated, it will mimic used milk very closely. And so it is quite possible to get very good growth rates in bottle lambs when the milk replacer is a high quality milk replacer, it's mixed according to directions and it's fed clean and in small batches. So the lambs have to go up and eat it four or five or six, seven times a day, much, much better than two feedings a day. Cold weather can force or make newborn animals or neonate animals chill very easily. Lambs, because of their small size and their large surface area, have a, they have a large mass to surface area ratio, which means they cool off quicker than other animals. So lambs are very prone to hypothermia or chilling. So we need to have, if our lambs are in a barn that's cool, we need to make sure they have access to extra milk replacer that they can eat that will allow them to maintain their body temperature and to thrive. So there's a reference to calf milk replacer on this slide and it says very clearly, don't do it. And I would not recommend using a calf milk replacer to raise bottle lambs. Other things you, you can be thinking about, concentrates or grain stimulate the development of the rumen in young lambs and that is important, so it's much more important to get lambs on concentrates. Soybean meal is a good one. Another one is a crumble, a, a mash, creep feed. Get them on this feed as fast as possible, and once they start doing that, that will develop the rumen. Always feed creep feed fresh to your lambs. Don't dump a 25 kg bag in a feeder and put it in the barn and expect it to be eaten over two weeks time because the creep feed will take on the smell of the barn and it'll be less appetizing to the lambs. I would recommend putting out fresh creep feed daily and sometimes at the beginning I might put it up twice a day just to keep it really clean, really fresh and make sure wherever you put it that the lambs can't put their feet in it. Early room and development, I talked about that a little bit in the last slide, but it is definitely enhanced by eating concentrates. So you want your lambs to have access to grain or a commercial creep feed in a mash form. And once the lambs start eating that, the rumen will develop and they will be able to switch to a solid feed quickly. Now it's absolutely critical that your lambs are eating solid feed. Several people will say, how heavy should a lamb be when I wean it? Other people will say, how heavy should a lamb be when I wean it? Neither one of them is the real critical point. The most critical point is that the lambs are eating solid feed and that they can drink water. And once they can do that, they can be weaned. So you can have small lambs that have can be weaned because they're eating solid feed and they're drinking water or by you can have a large lamb, a very large lamb, and if all of it knows how to do is to suckle, then it may not be undergo weaning very well at all. So it's not age, it's not size, it's solid feed consumption. Here's an example of a diet that uh, could be used as a creep feed or a starter. Creep feeds usually come in at 16 to 18% protein. I like to recommend actually starting lambs 
on pure soybean meal. You can just go to a feed mill, buy it. It's in a mash form. Put it in a, a feeder. The lambs put their nose in there, get a little bit on the end of their nose. They look it off. It tastes good. It's high in energy. They start eating it. Lambs, when one lamb sees another lamb do something, they always copy or usually will copy that behavior. So you really need one lamb in there to start eating and the, the other lambs will eat. So you want a nice creep area that the lambs can get in, the ewes can't get in. You want to start them on a mash, which is like a coarse flour. Then you want them to go to a crumble, which is a kernel of barley broken into three or four pieces. And then finally, they can go on to a pelleted based diet. I would not recommend starting lambs on solid feed on a pelleted diet unless it was a very small pellet that the feed company made specific for lambs. I would always recommend starting them on a mash, then going to a crumble, and then going to a pellet, just so you don't inhibit feed intake with physical form of the feed. So here's uh, an example, a possibility, of, or a possible way of a protocol for weaning your lambs. The lambs are born, they get colostrum in the first day and a half, or first day, absolutely critical. Then they move on to milk replacer. They are fed milk replacer for a period of time. In this example, it goes to 27 days. And then you can go that long or you can wean quicker if the lambs have made the adjustment and are eating solid feed. Once the lambs are eating, and in this case, they say 0.6 of a pound of, of creep feed or starter per day, that is kind of the magic figure. I've seen that number before for when you can wean your lambs. If they're eating half a pound a day or 0.6 of a pound a day, they can be weaned. Once they're weaned, they'll be on solid food. You can put some green leafy hay in front of them to go with the, uh, the concentrate and the creep or starter and they'll do just great. This is a really good slide for showing the it's a summary for when to wean lambs. And again, it reiterates the point that it's not just age for weaning. There's three very critical points. Weight is part of it. Creep feed consumption is totally critical. If they can't eat solid food, they can't be weaned. And water consumption is an important part of it as well. They have to know how to drink water because if they can't drink water, they won't eat very much food. Food intake is completely correlated with water consumption. So if you if they don't drink water, they're not going to eat solid food. Now this slide is a good slide for showing pointing out cleanliness. Cleanliness is very important. You can get a condition called abomasal bloat in young lambs or bottle fed lambs and this is really a problem or you can get scours. Cleanliness is critical. It just cannot be overstated. So you must wash things down. Now there is a four steps there for how to clean. Uh, this cleaning recommendation of warm water rinse, the hot alkaline detergent, an acid rinse and a sanit sanitizing is from dairy. It is how people would clean up their milking systems. So I would really recommend once you look at one of these milk replacing feeding machines, you do talk, talk to a dairy person on the cleanliness, on a proper and complete cleaning system. Because if you don't keep it clean, your lambs are gonna get sick and that is a real problem. So that concludes this webinar on feeding milk replacer and on orphan lambs. I hope you've learned something and I thank you very much for your participation. Thank you.